Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Off the Glass podcast. This is an emergency podcast. This is going to slot in episode number 32, but this is really just an emergency podcast because Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee buck. If y'all have been tuned in following every episode, you'll see that the episode that we actually posted earlier today, we laughed at the Bucks saying that they were getting in the Dame sweepstakes. We said there was no way. They don't have the assets for it. Clearly, we didn't know. Then that's why neither of us are NBA GMs because they cooked up a nice little three-team deal between the Blazers, the Bucks, and the Phoenix Suns. And I'm not going to lie, I think all three teams have something positive to look forward to from the results of this trade. So I'm interested to get into it. We're going to get into just our initial reactions to the deal and then kind of talk through all three of the teams and where that puts them at. But as we always, always got to start on the day where Dame is traded. Dame, how are we doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm happy. I'm relieved because it's finally over. The Damian Lillard, Lillard saga has ended. And I'm just happy because it wasn't. I'm be honest. I like shake up. I like change. Mm-hmm. I'm be honest with you. I like bombs, woge bombs. I like when big blockbuster stuff like this happens. So I was excited. Um, I was literally driving. It just got a notification on my phone. Glanced down for a second. Almost crashed the car. I'm like what is this? I was not expecting that at all. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I definitely definitely excited to talk about it too. Yeah, I was in the drive-thru getting a coffee like in the afternoon, a little afternoon pick-me-up. And as I'm taking, I got the the wallet that's like attached to your phone. As I'm sliding my card out, my phone turns on and I see it was like three Woj notifications and then like two Shams notifications. I was like, if the both of them tuning at the same time this much, like it wasn't like no small deal. Both of them just broke some crazy news. Get a lady my car. Open the phone. I'm in the group chat. You talking about, whoa, whoa. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Then I see the Dame news. I don't even realize that it's to Milwaukee. My first instinct is Dame and Miller Trader. I'm like, it's Miami. Or like, oh, it's Toronto because that just came out yesterday. And they were talking about they might move Scotty or whatever. Like, a lot of times you have deals like this. Whatever team is brought up right before the trade goes through, it usually is them. So I'm like, it's Toronto Mm -hmm. or it's Miami. I had to pull around out the drive through into the parking lot and like sat there and read all of it for a second. It was like, whoa, Milwaukee? Right, bro. <laughs> Two top 75 players teaming up? That might literally be the greatest spacing we've ever seen on an NBA court. Yeah. It don't matter who, you, as long as y'all don't put a for real, for real non shooter at the two, it's uh, the, I, you literally could not put a better space lineup around Giannis than what's about to happen this year. So for those of y'all that have not seen it, just so everybody is on the same page here, the Trailblazers traded Damian Lillard to the Milwaukee Bucks. Portland gets back Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton. Again, this is a three-team deal, so the Suns are here as well. Tumani Kamara, not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. I've never heard his name before. And then... They got a 2029 unprotected first from Milwaukee and then a pick swap in 2028 and 2030, both from Milwaukee as well. The Suns are getting Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. Um, So the Blazers come away from this deal with Drew and Aiden primarily, and then basically three first round picks essentially from the Bucks. And they're basically betting that Four or five years from now, right, that first pick conveys in 2028, either Lillard or Giannis or both of them won't be in Milwaukee. Or at minimum, Giannis is going to be approaching the edge of his prime. Lillard may be retired by the time some of these last picks convey because we're looking in 2030, that's seven years from now. Like He's going to be very, very end of his career, about to retire, or maybe has retired. He's going to be gone by then. Right, and so they're betting that. Y'all are putting all y'all's chips in. Y'all are going to be rebuilding, and we can go and get three good years of good draft picks from you all on top of getting Drew, who, as we'll get into, they're probably going to be flipping for more assets, more draft capital. So really like this move for Portland. But before we get into that, we have to get in with the, the biggest name, 
And you can see it here if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, the first bullet point I have there is, does this trade make the Bucks clear title favorites? Because like I said, they just traded for a top 75 guy to pair with their own top 75 guy in Giannis and still were able to keep Chris Middleton again because he can't be traded because he just signed the extension and Brooke Lopez as well. It got off of Drew Holiday. Damian Lillard is going to come in and play that exact position. This team is, I mean, like, where does this duo actually even rank in the NBA right now? Because I think they're probably the best duo in the East pretty handily. And it might be the best duo in the NBA right now. Bro, we made a video a long, long time ago where we get we picked a superstar. Um, and then we say, yo, what is the perfect duo? What is the perfect player to put around the superstar? When, when it was up to Giannis, I said Damian Lillard. To me... This is the absolute 100% most perfect fit for Giannis as far as a duo. Mm -hmm. So to go to the question, are the Bucks the clear title favorites? 100% in my opinion. Like I, I think it's like they're, they should 100% be the favorites. Like no question in my mind, they should be the favorites. Um, Like especially if we're just going to talk about the East, it's like, yeah, Boston improved a little bit. They got... They just made some changes to the roster when they got Przingis and traded Marcus Smart. So their roster is a little bit different. But this move for the Bucks just made them even better. Like they were already people. They were already they were the, the one seed. seed. They were yeah. the one seed. They already were the one seed. And it's like you add arguably a top ten player, like one of the, a top three point guard, just someone who is so like as great of a shooter as he is, as great of a scorer as he is. To pair that with Giannis, like, can you imagine a Damian Lillard Giannis pick and roll, like with, with Brooke, with, with Chris? Brooke, what can you help on? And they can, nothing. can't help off of nothing. That everyone right. can space the floor. Giannis, Damian, you gotta guard Damian Lillard like you do Steph. Like you yep. gotta guard him all the way out Forty here. Plus Pat, feet. That's what I'm saying. It's like, bro, the spacing is insane. Um, you still but with Damian Lillard's case, obviously you lose a, bit, a little bit of perimeter defense, but it's like you still got Brooke and you got Yano on the back end that could clean all that up. Um, as far as a perimeter defender, I mean, I guess you can hope that Middleton steps it up a little bit. I mean, coming off his injuries, that he could be a little bit better of a defender because obviously missing Drew is going to hurt in that aspect. But what Definitely. you're gaining, to me, 10, 10 times worth it, bro. Mm -hmm. 10 times worth it. So, yeah, in my opinion, East, West, and this is coming from a Lakers. The Lakers fans who love the Lakers. The Bucks are the favorites, bro. And they should be 100%. I could not agree more. Skip Bayless tweeted that Drew Holiday or the the Bucks losing Drew Holiday and getting Damian Lillard is actually their a downgrade. Like they're worse now. Bro, I'm so you, with you. My fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, if Skip said it, it's probably the wrong one. That's what I was going to say. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. There's, like, anything like, coming out of his mouth should not even be taken seriously. Like, right. cause what are you even talking about, bro? It's wild. Um, but I, I couldn't agree more than with everything, with everything that you said. It, I genuinely think this is probably the best duo pairing in the NBA right now. Like you said, the spacing between them two. I, aside from Steph Curry, what could have been a better point guard to pair with Giannis? The gravity that the two of them are going to put on the court that give Chris and Brooke and whoever is playing at the two, whether it's, I think you have Monte Morris now, right? Or Malik Beasley, one of the two of them. Um, doesn't who, matter. Literally, whoever is in there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> open shots all day. Because like I said, you're you going to have to pick a poison. Either y'all are going to die by this Damon Giannis pick and roll, which I wouldn't advise because what, what are you supposed to do? You can't go over. You can't go under. You got to play the role hard. Like, it, it's too ridiculous to defend. And then if y'all do want to help, well, here's Chris Middleton. Mm -hmm. Or here's Brooke Lopez. Like, it is going to be a nightmare for people to defend night in, night out. Like you said, the only real takeaway that – you could give as a negative for the Bucks is like you said, the perimeter defense losing Drew is going to hurt a lot in that aspect. But what you are gaining in offense is really, I mean, on another level, arguably a top two shooter of all time, but like really at worst, like a top five shooter at all time and probably higher than that. Yeah.
Um, yeah, bro. A mess. Yo, this is crazy, bro. And it's like, to me, I think it, I mean, obviously, Steph Curry is a better player than Damian Lillard. But I, I just like the fit even more than if it was Steph Curry because I, Giannis needs a closer, in my opinion. Like you've mm-hmm. seen with Chris Middleton, he had to be the closer in pretty much all of their playoffs runs because Giannis can't score p- from the perimeter. And Damian Lillard is like the definition of clutch when it comes to clutch in the NBA. He's the definition of a closer. Yeah. So it's like he, then they score so differently. Like they both can average 30, but Giannis' 30 is completely different than, than Damian Lillard's 30. Mm-hmm. So it's like – Come down to late games where obviously Giannis doesn't want the ball in his hands because he doesn't want to shoot those free throws, or he just can't score. Like say they're da- they're down two or they're down three and they need a three or something like that. Like you have Damian Lillard that can has has hit those shots already and is perfectly fine with taking those shots. So to me, absolutely match made in heaven, bro. Honestly, I I can't bro, I can't wait to watch it. I I I'm gonna watch so many Bucks games where I can't wait to just see them on the court together. Man, like it's gonna be insane. The jersey swap was so weird to look at, bro. Oh yeah, it's gross. so <laughs> weird to look. Like I think mentally, I was prepared for the heat. Yeah, like, I, I figured it was coming at some point. Maybe it's during the season, but it was gonna be Miami. To see the Photoshop of him with the Motorola jersey patch and the Milwaukee Bucks jersey, I was like, whoa! I ain't see that coming, bro. I nah. did not see it coming at all. This is to me. One of the more out of left field trades, especially for one that's been so publicized and so drawn out, like you called it a saga, it really has been a saga. Multiple seasons of this. Are they going to trade him? They're clearly going mm-hmm. into a rebuild, but they keep denying it so that they don't want to upset him. Like, it, so glad that this is over because it was way, way overplayed out. Um, but yeah, Damian Lillard in the Eastern Conference. He's going to play the Heat a lot, which I know, bro, if y'all – I said it in the, the short that I made as soon as the news broke. If y'all know a Heat fan, family member, friend, bro, just, just send him a text. Give him a call, bro. Tell him you love them, bro. They're going through it. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. They're going through it. We know a couple, and they're, uh, they're not they're not happy right now. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, honestly, I don't care what Pat Riley and – I don't care what they say. They were all in on Damian Lillard. They weren't trying to be desperate. But all of your offseason moves was looked like, yeah, we're just making room for Dame. Like, right. that's what it is. Like, we're just they, they, for really Dame. Ain't, they really didn't do much. They just lost stuff. <laughs> like, they just lost everything. It was like, but we, everyone was like, nah, it's fine. Like, they're getting Dame, so it's right. literally fine. And now, I don't know if you've seen it. There was like a report that was like the Heat are interested in Drew Holiday. I, that's a good move for them. It is. Like, nice what do you do now? Device. Right. You got to do something. Yeah. Uh, so, Drew Holiday would make a lot of sense. That defense. It's even scarier, like that is yeah. true. Yeah, dang. Yeah, I didn't even think about that <laughs> defense. Yo, they right. they just get great defenders everywhere. We'll just figure. Could all you out. you got Drew and Jimmy guarding some stuff at the top, little screen action, and oh well, let somebody try to get through. Here come Bam, <laughs> like Literally. bro, that's terrifying. Um, Trey Young gonna have fits. Oh my yo. god, <laughs> Trey Young is gonna be. Oh, you're gonna have nightmares about the matchups. That would be that would literally be Trey Young hell. That would be awful. Oh, yeah. That Absolutely. would be terrible. Um, yeah, I cannot, cannot, cannot wait to see Milwaukee games this year. I can't wait to see him go play Portland in Portland. He's gonna like they ass. It oh. it's gonna be out of pure respect for he gonna he gonna chalk it up to the fans. He's gonna be like, bro, all these people still wearing my jersey. Like, I gotta. I just got to drop 70 again. <laughs> like, Can you imagine that he dropped 70 in Portland. That would be nuts. <clears throat> bro, it's going to be, yeah. It's, I can't wait, bro. I can't wait to see the, the Bucks boston matchups. Those are already always good. But now it's like, damn, those are going to be even better. Sixers is just, they're not even in the combo right now. Mm-hmm. They're just by the, by the wayside. But yeah. Just, bro, can you imagine, like, I've seen talk shows talk about it, like, just think about the potential finals matchups, like, Bucks, Nuggets, Giannis. Honestly, it's, like, two top, two of the best duos in the league. Yep. Buc- Bucks, Nuggets. You got Giannis versus Jokic. It could be Bucks, Suns. That's still going to be a good matchup. Crazy. It could be, be Bucks, Lakers. It could be, like, yeah, bro, the matchups is just, man. I can't wait. I just hope everyone stay healthy. I pray to God everybody mm-hmm. stay healthy. At least for the playoffs, because I need to see this. Like, I'm already ready for playoff basketball at this point. That's literally the only thing that could, I think, stop this 
Bucks team right now. Like we on paper, clearing away title favorites, bro. Mm-hmm. It's clearing away. They have very little super exploitable holes. Because even what you can say about their perimeter defense, Giannis and Brooke are DPOY candidates year in, year out. They will patch up those holes. So it's mm-hmm. like, what can you like where can you really point at on this roster and be like, yeah, this is gonna be the kryptonite other than somebody potentially getting hurt. You could say that about any team. Yeah, exactly. It's, there's no real weaknesses. You can't point one out right now. All right, because I'm not too concerned about depth. We're early in the season. They'll figure it out. Yeah. Buyout market always. You get a couple of vets that could play. Throughout the season, you're going to be able to potentially get vets. Like They're going to know that this is a ring opportunity. They'll be all right. So I'm not really concerned about depth. Just injuries, just the injuries that I think could really stop this team. I'd be the only thing in their way. Mm-hmm. Um, let's pivot over to the Portland side of things. Um, like I said, obviously getting off of Damian Lillard here, they go out and they get Drew Holiday from the Bucks, who are who is more likely than not, it sounds like going to be traded and. This man basically turning into maybe a four or five team deal, basically, um, where Drew Holiday ends up getting rerouted to um, some of the teams I've seen early on. Like you said, Milwaukee, or not Milwaukee, Miami makes a ton of sense. They need a point guard. You get Drew Holiday in there, definitely would be a big upgrade from Big Booty Lowry. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, RG3 is crazy for saying it. It's, he might he trying to be in it. Trying to be in the thick of it like Lowry. Out of pocket. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so out of pocket. Um, but teams like Miami, um, you know, even potentially Los Angeles, the Clippers, or the 76ers facilitating some type of James Harden movement around there. Maybe Drew Holiday comes into play as a part of, of trying to get those talks advanced. Him going back there. Wasn't yeah, he already with it? Wasn't yeah, he already in Philly? He was an all-star in Philly 10 years yeah. ago. Um, that was so long ago. God damn. Right. Maybe he goes back there. Maybe he ends up in, in L.A. Like, I, I don't know what the, the final destination is. All those talks are, are real preliminary. But um, he's a guy who hinted at saying he was going to retire after this contract is over. And he has two years left. So playing at a high level, coming off of an all-star season, he's going to have a lot, a lot of teams interested in his services uh, because of how he played last year. Um, especially during Chris Middleton's absence. <clears throat> but the piece in this trade for Portland I really want to focus on is DeAndre Ayton. They made the switch to get off of Nurkic, which they got off of his contract, big W for Portland. But they get Ayton back, who is under contract. Mm-hmm. We know he had his issues with Monty Williams in the past. Obviously, Frank Vogel was there. Thought process was Vogel might get him to really buy in effort wise, especially in the playoffs. Because aside from that finals run, his playoff games have left a lot, a lot to be desired. But they're like four series deep, right? They went to the semis back to back years. Um, and Aiden was a question mark and really underperformed in all four of those series especially this past year in both of those series that they, they had. Um, so he gets a fresh start, goes to Portland uh, with a younger team, younger timeline. Um, and a lot of people forget he was the number one pick in a draft that featured Luca and Trey Young. Um, and he was really that dominant coming out of Arizona. So um, what do you think about the fit there in Portland, him playing along – you know, Scoot, Anthony Simon, Shane Sharp being there with, with Chauncey, um, and then basically kind of just taking a role on the the potential that he showcased coming in as a former number one pick. Um, I mean, I like it. Uh, I mean, I like it as far as he fits their timeline a little bit better. Um, he's still young. Um, he's going to go there, probably get more shot attempts, like get more shots than he would get, obviously, if he was in Phoenix. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like he needs to make his money on the defensive end. I feel like he needs to be mm-hmm. a little bit better on the defensive end. Um, cause the, even the way he scores, like we talked about, it's like, he's, he's kind of so soft around the rim. Like it's, it mm-hmm. honestly is annoying to watch from your center and, and then, he demands touches. 
Yeah, exactly. And he's not going to have Chris Paul setting him up. I mean, he wasn't going to have that in Phoenix anyway this year, yeah. but still, like, he, I don't, I mean, I like Scoot. I don't know how much of a pure facilitator he is in that aspect of, like, making sure that Aiden gets his touches in the post. But at the end of the day, like I said, he fits their timeline. Um, hopefully he'll buy in on the defensive end. And if he does that, then, I mean, I actually kind of like the fit a little bit. Um, and, yeah, they're just young. Like, that team is just young, developing, getting mm-hmm. better. There's not a lot of pressure for him, which is also good. Like, he doesn't have the pressure of, like, oh, I got to guard Jokic in the playoffs. I got to perform. I got to do this. I got to do that. He just has to worry about just getting better um, and developing his game a little bit further. So, I actually, I actually think the fit is not bad, to be mm-hmm. honest. I think if the Blazers can get him to consistently play like what he played like in that finals run, this is a fantastic move for them. I I really like the draft capital that they got back. I think them basically betting on Milwaukee being in a rebuild come the end of this decade, right? Mm -hmm. Makes a ton of sense. So they'll probably end up with some really nice draft picks at a time where, you know, Scoot Henderson is just hitting the – early early stages of his prime he'll be like it's crazy to think but he'll be like 24 25 um and so if he can pan out to be kind of what some of these early projections of his career are a guy that can be a franchise player somebody that can be a perennial all-star in this league potentially perennial all nba guy you're pairing that with what looked like a consistent 20 and 10 center that's what Aiden was in that finals run. He was working defensively. He was working on the glass. He was an actual impact presence on both sides of the floor in the paint. If you're getting that Aiden with that scoop, whatever Shaden turns out to be, like him and Anthony could be like explosive scorers in this league. Both of them have the talent to do it. We already seen uh, Anthony Simons do that in his time in Portland already. Um this team could look very, very good in a couple of years. So I, I like what they're putting together there. I like the move. Obviously, they need to get off the Nurkic contract, too. Um, they got Drew Holiday. They're going to move him. I don't know what Jeremy Grant is going to do long term because he got the bag of all bags there in Portland. Don't know how movable that contract will really be. But for the time being, with what they have, um, I think this is a very, very good start to what's a, a clear rebuilding era in Portland, which is all we could have asked for. As not even asked for. That's all we were telling them we wanted them to do. Just pick a direction. If you're going to go keep Dame, go all in. If you're not going to go all in, trade him and do the rebuild. And they've got rid of him, and they're doing the right things to build up to hopefully two years, three years, really start having the pieces put together to try to you know, get into a period where they can make some playoff runs. Um, so yeah, ultimately, like I said, I think all three teams got at least something beneficial from this deal. Um, so I, I really like how Portland came out of this. And when you think about it, and I want to know what your opinion is, because to me, when you think about it, this is probably a better deal than they would have gotten with, uh, what they could have gotten from Miami. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if you bring in Tyler hero, right, you have scoop. Anthony Simon, Shane Sharp, and Tyler Hero. You're log jamming minutes very badly. Somebody's going to become the odd man out because you you can't play all four of them at once. Mm -hmm. Um, And and like we've seen in places like Golden State, it's tough to just be able to try to circulate guys' minutes like when you have so many pieces at play. Um, So you would have had Hero, and it's like Jaime Jaquez potentially, maybe a guy like Nikola Jovic and some draft capital, and it's like, you want that or a guy like Aiden who can come in and play and contribute and fit in with this core long-term immediately and the draft capital and get Drew Holiday, who you're going to probably flip for more young assets or just draft capital. Um, so I think this is actually a, a good deal better than what they could have gotten for Miami in this deal. Yeah, this deal is definitely better than Miami's. Because like you said, it's like, bro, you're going to hinder the development of your guards. The whole point of your rebuild right now is your guards that you have on your team. So, like, to bring in another another guard that you would also have to pay him, you're also paying him a lot of money. It's like, like you said, it's going to it's gonna be tough as far as getting everyone their minutes, and then it's going to hinder people's development because they're not going to have the minutes to be on the court. Um, and then you'll have a problem at center because <laughs> you still you, then you would still have Jokic. I mean, he, not uh, Nurkic, not Jokic. 
Mm-hmm. Um, even if even if he got moved, it's like all right, who are you replacing him with? It's like it just the fit wouldn't have been as good as this one. Like this one to me is like a really good fit. It's honestly, almost a perfect fit as far as the young player that you're getting back has nothing to do as far as taking minutes away from your young guards because that mm-hmm. right now that's the focus of this rebuild. Yeah, so yeah, this this deal is definitely better than the Miami deal unless they were going to do like some three team Tyler Hero goes here and then we get this piece like right. it would have had to been the three team deal regardless but at the end of the day I like the way this one turned out. The reports came out shortly after this news broke that Pat Riley never once called the Trailblazers to adjust or up his offer at any point during this entire you know th- basically 3 months now since Damian Lillard officially requested his trade from Portland. So a, what are your thoughts on that? And B, if you were a Miami Heat fan, how would you feel about hearing that your GM really did not seemingly put it all out there or at least make an ex, you know, extra effort to try to land Damian Lillard? I'm going to be honest. I think that the, the Heat organization was kind of like everyone else when we're thinking like, bro, he's going to be a Miami Heat, bro. Like he's going to be on the Heat no matter what. No matter how bad the package is, like where where else you gonna go? Basically, that they were they was playing a game of chicken. Like where yeah. else you gonna go? Like we got the best. We the only team that's gonna want him. He said he only wants to play for us. Mm-hmm. Where else is he going? So it's like honestly, I genuinely think it was a case of like Milwaukee wasn't even a thought. Like I, they weren't even thinking like he's not really gonna go to Milwaukee. What, what Milwaukee got to get? Like they're, he's not going to Milwaukee. I guarantee you now, if they knew that like Milwaukee was like serious like we're about to get him they would up that offer i i genuinely believe that. i think they would off that offer because I, I think there's no way you just can sit here and knowing that you, that guy wants to only play for you and just be like nah we're, we're just gonna stand stand tall with this one package that we're gonna give you and we're not gonna up it even though the tight even though if this team gets you they're clearing away the favorites in the east right he's in their conference yeah um Pat Riley, uh, he got some explaining to do. Yeah, I, I've seen Heat fans that are fed up, real fed up with how they've handled not even just this Lillard situation, but these last few seasons of like, we're so close, we're so close, we're so close, and they just can't seem to get that one piece that could put them over the edge. And it seemed like Lillard was going to be that one piece. And uh, he's eluded them. But how do you yeah. mess this one up? How do you I when you think about it, bro? All these years, every single year was Bradley Bill Lillard. Mm-hmm. It was a, a, some scoring guard. Everybody thought, like, all right, this year is the year. Like, it's finally going to happen. Like, I'm over here rooting for the heat because I'm like, bro, these guys deserve to get this guy at this point. Yeah. Like, he said, I only want to play for the heat. That how do y'all mess that up? I genuinely I don't know. Only explanation is the one that you gave. They really were just trying to be like tough guy with the Blazers and be like, you don't want to take this deal. I like you're not gonna get a better deal. We'll just wait you out. And then when you come back, I'm taking a pick off the board. Like not thinking that anybody was gonna figure something out, which is crazy. It's Damian Lillard. Every single team, and I'm sure the Rockets probably called. Like it wouldn't make no sense just side Fred Van Vliet, but like, why not, bro? Like, I don't know, bro. You want, like, whoever, bro. I'll give you Tari Eason. What's up? Like, you got it. You have to test that water. It's Mm -hmm. one of the 75 greatest players ever. You make the phone call. So to think that if that was the case, to think that they really had it in the bag, man, Pat Riley misplayed that really about as badly as you could have. And they need to stop. Honestly, this little the heat culture is kind of getting in the way of this stuff, too. Because this whole mm-hmm. notion of like, we're not gonna be desperate. We're gonna be good without him, bro. I honestly, bro, you guys were AFC. You had a fantastic, a fantastic run. I really get that. It bro, almost I, didn't happen. It almost did not happen, and y'all got scraped in the in the finals, bro. You tell me you want to go to the finals, even if you miraculously do that again, you're not beating the Nuggets again. You're no. not beating whoever comes out of the the, the West, bro. You're just you're just not talented enough. Mm-hmm. So like you need to stop with this whole. They're worse. They are worse than they were last year as of right now today, bro. No Gabe Vincent, no Max Struess. Yeah, they didn't really fill those gaps. Like 
That's what I'm saying. Y'all need to stop this whole just kind of an undrafted guy, and he's just going to work in this heat culture. We're just going to pass the ball and play defense. Bro, at the end of the day, y'all not good enough. You're not talented enough, bro. That stuff is only going to take you so far in the NBA, bro. So, they, they honestly, they were just too much of like, we're not going to be desperate. We're going to be fine. Dame is going to come here regardless. And now y'all over here hoping that Drew Holiday goes there because that's the best consolation prize we got out there yeah. right now. You saw Jimmy saying that he thinks the Bucks need to be investigated for collusion or, or was it uh like tampering? Tampering. Yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah, that was fun. Jimmy's a character, bro. And Jimmy's then, definitely a character. Tyler Hero quoted it talking about some, yeah, what he said. What <laughs> tampering? Lillard AJ out here talking about they don't trade him to Miami. He gonna request a trade wherever else he gets traded to Miami, wherever he go. How does saying. that not tamper for Miami? How did y'all not get a guy that was being actively publicly tampered for? I don't get it, bro. They just messed it up. I'm telling you. They just... That's crazy. I will say, though, that, like, I guess apparently Giannis and Dame have been talking about, like, teaming up for a minute. Like, um, like they've been wanting to be on the same team. Mm -hmm. But it's like, players are going to recruit players. Like, And I think players have the right to do that, like, in the offseason. Like, 100%. obviously, don't just tweet, like, Dame, come play with me. But, like. But why, why can't they do that? I I I always think that tampering is a dumb rule in general. Yeah. What is what's wrong with me being like, yo, Billy, come I, I want you on my team? What's right. wrong with that? that I the, just don't see what's wrong with that. In the corporate world, bro, you can like you just want to talk to somebody at another company mm -hmm. and then like y'all have a lunch or whatever, and it's like you give them a job offer. That's not illegal. All right, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm capping, but I don't think yeah. that's illegal. But it's like, bro, you stopping me. What if I got a better opportunity over here? Right. You trying to keep me down? You trying to hold me down? Bro might have a better opportunity for me. I don't tampering to me is dumb in general. Like, yeah. I think it's stupid. Let's get to the, the last team that's involved here, uh, which is Phoenix. Who, like I said, they are getting four players in this deal. They get rid of Aiden and bring in Yusuf Nurkic. Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. So a couple of good depth pieces for them, I think, in both uh, Grayson Allen and Nasir Little, who I think is underrated. I think he shot like 37% from three last year. Um, lengthy wing can be, you know, aggressive on the perimeter. I think that fills in those gaps that are needed by this team. Um, but I think most importantly, they get off of Aiton, who is a center who I just think we talked about it multiple times now on this podcast. He may be right now today the, a better player than Nurkic. Actually, well, I'm not going to say maybe. I think he is better than Nurkic right now today. Nurkic, since the injury, has not been good on the defensive side of the ball and has really just kind of overall his game has regressed. regressed. But for how the Suns play, for how that team is constructed, Nurkic is a better fit. He's not going to demand touches. It's not how Nurkic plays. Aiton needs post touches to get his little uh, shimmy floaters off. Mm -hmm. So I think Pierre from Through the Wire says this a lot. I think he said it in their pod about this earlier, um, that it's like addition by subtraction. Like while he may be a worse player in a vacuum on the Suns, Nurkic is probably the better fit. It's not anything that's really going crazy moving the needle any more than their team already has moved in the offseason. But fit-wise, it gives them a guy who at least is a effort person on the boards, good screen setter, a big body. Again, not the greatest defender, not a great rim protector, definitely not good in space, especially, again, all of this since his injury. But, who knows, maybe with Frankie V, you know, we know Vogel loves to be defensive-minded and get his guys playing on the defensive side of the ball. So maybe he can revive some of that. Um, but like I said, Nurkic, I think, fits there better. And then I like Grayson and Asir off the bench as pieces for them um, that can come in and be a part of what can be a set rotation for them, um, you know, when it's really crunch time and we get into the playoffs. So, I don't know. What do you think about about the, the eight and Nurkic swap for the for Phoenix? Yeah, pretty much everything you said. My main thing is, like, um, like you said, even if he's a, a worse player, the fact that you're getting him and other pieces, other rotational pieces along in the deal is what makes it good for me. Because it's like, we said it when they got Bradley Bill. I'm like, bro, who are they filling out the roster with? Like, not even like good players. Like, do they have money to sign literally anyone? And we have already saw their offseason. They actually had a pretty decent offseason for the for what they had. They, they came out pretty well. And you get a guy like, like you said, Nasir Little and Grayson Allen, who could be rotational pieces for them. Obviously not the best of players, but 
for as hot, top heavy as they were supposed to be to have those type of players in at least in the rotation. I feel like it's a great. It, I feel like it was a good trade for them because, like we said it before, like I always felt like they need to trade Aiden for pieces. Like even if you get worse players in return, obviously you're not gonna get players better than Aiden. You're just you just need multiple bodies, bro. Like mm-hmm. you just can't run out here with this. We're gonna have Beal, uh, Booker, and KD, and just we just go hoop. <laughs> and right. then we're gonna fill the roster out with me and you, and then we're just gonna hoop. <laughs> like they actually have people that are respectable rotational pieces, especially for. Especially because none of those guys are needed to score the basketball at all. You're not needed to do literally anything but just play some defense, hit some open shots. You don't even have to create for yourself. We have all of that within these three players, bro. We're fine. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think the trade was good for them. Um, What I will ask you, though, because I, I forgot who I heard talk about this. Like, I understand that you're getting better as a team, but, like, does it make sense to help? Like they basically just were the reason the Bucks are now the title favorites, no matter what. Yeah. Like, does it make sense to even though you're getting better to actively like help a title to like another title team? I get it; they're not in the same conference. Like mm-hmm. if, they, if they did this to like I don't know the Nuggets or something like that, obviously it wouldn't happen. But yeah, if they did it to a team in their conference. Then I'm like, all right, you're kind of stupid because it doesn't matter that you're getting better. You just made the team in your conference the favorites. But at the end of the day, you still, if you are this title team that you're going to make to the finals, you're probably going to run into those guys. Yep. So it's like, say you guys meet in the finals and you guys lose. It's like, you're the reason why they just literally, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know how you feel about that. I think they have to believe that the pieces that they added in terms of depth and then getting off of Aiden and swapping to Nurkic made them comfortable that that, that was what they needed to fill out what they believe is a championship roster. So they don't really care what anybody else has. They were comfortable with, we got Booker, we got KD, we got Bradley Beal. We got some guys around them now. We got a center who fits better. We're ready to roll out against whoever. We don't care Damon, Giannis, Embiid, and maybe Harden, whatever, Tatum and Brown. It doesn't matter what pairing comes out of the East. We're comfortable with what we got. So that has to be their mentality because, like you said, it would be crazy if they do run into Milwaukee and lose because y'all were that third team facilitator because this deal doesn't go through without a third team because Milwaukee does not have enough of the young player assets that they wanted to. They got that in Aiden. Yeah. It just it's just gonna be funny because like yeah if they meet in the final that's gonna be hilarious that'd that's be, gonna be crazy that'd be that'd a be, wild series too that would be a wild series but all in all I do like the trade um for every side I, I do like the trade surprisingly one team didn't get absolutely fleeced out <laughs> of this deal um for what each team needed I I like the trade still gotta say it uh Rudy Gobert was moved for more first round picks than Damian Lillard. <laughs> which is that, crazy that's such a bad trade bro it's like, such a bad trade like who do you like i don't know man rudy sucks <laughs> like the fact that that the fact that that trade went down and y'all gave up that much for rudy gobert yeah and the, like, the not only did they get five picks five first round picks they still got Walker Kessler, Jared Vanderbilt, Patrick Beverly, Malik Beasley, and Leandro Balmero. Now, obviously, none of those guys are Drew Holiday or DeAndre Ayton, but Walker Kessler is an elite rim protector already, one of the best defensive centers in the league as a rookie, outperforming Gobert this year. Well, who do y'all think Gobert is? Like, who did y'all think he – like? That's just though he was like the missing piece. We get Gobert, we're winning a championship. Like team, some organizations really prove why they're poverty franchises, bro. I'm telling you, they make certain moves that's just like it's just dumb. It don't make sense. And then you got the other ch- the other franchises that always make the smart moves, the good moves. That's why the Lakers is about to package D'Lo for Drew Holiday. We about to win the chip. That would be crazy. Oh my, D'Lo, goodbye. Gosh. You're out of here, Drew. Come on over, man. Come to the contender, baby. Let Palinka figure out a way to get Drew Holiday on the Lakers. He somebody need, he need to get a uh, a statue outside of oh, the, yeah. the crypto.com. Crypt, yeah. If he trade for Drew Holiday, y'all mess around, get a ring off of that. 
Oh man, he, he he playing like he's simulating 2K. He just out here making trades, fleecing everybody. His team just got wildly better, and he started with a horrible, not horrible, but a bad fit horrible. roster. Horrible. You had it right the first time. Was Westbrook not horrible, bro? I'm not taking that disrespect. He was horrible with the Lakers. He it was, was a bad fit. Terrible. It was a bad fit. It was horrible. It's like it was like trading at trading someone at their absolute lowest and getting what he got is crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Crazy but, dudes that are on extensions now, throwaway players. <laughs> Wizards were like, "Yeah, second round pick, great." Sure, fine. Take Rui. He sucks. Oh wait, he's actually a good at basketball. <laughs> like, bro, this is he's GM need to be bro. investigated, bro. This is crazy, bro. It's ridiculous, bro. But I tell you one thing: we get Drew Holiday, bro. Everything goes out the window, bro. We're the favorites, and my bias will never tell me otherwise until someone beats us. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Like, as much as, like, Logic will probably say, yeah, the Bucks still got it, bro. We get Drew Holiday. There's nothing. You can't tell me nothing until people beat us. Hey, that they, you would have more All-Stars than the Bucks. Hey, man. That's three, that's three All-Stars right there. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So, ah, basketball season. That's, I like, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It, as much as I hated the fact that the trade was dragged out, I do kind of like that it was right before basketball season. Bro, it feels <laughs> like this is the banger that we needed to like get everybody back into. Oh shoot, bro, we it's week four of the NFL season. I feel like NBA about to start up. Right, that's exactly what we needed to set it off, bro. Because if they made this trade like as soon as all season started, it would be like, all right, cool. Damn, can't wait. Right, wait, the hype would have died. Yeah, exactly. Waits months to see this. Like, right. so, I, now I, you I got like it. it. We got. Five days, right? Five days until media day. So we're going to get to see interviews with Dame in Milwaukee, him and Giannis. Um, I'm, bro, I'm so excited. And we got, bro, basketball. I think the first preseason games are played on uh, October 5th, right? They're playing those games in, I think, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, October 5th, Dallas and uh, in Minnesota. We are only... Less than 10 days away from basketball. Yeah, man. It's time. Yeah. We back. Off the uh, glass. Oh, oh, <laughs> off the glass. No more off the Oh, man. That's going to do it for, for the emergency pod unless you got any last-minute thoughts on the, the Lillard trade. We just had to get this out because the video was literally uploading of us laughing about how the Bucks can't trade for Damian Lillard as he got traded – or as – the, as Damian Lillard couldn't get traded to the Bucks, as that trade actually came to fruition in real life, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous how that worked out. But. The timing is crazy. No nah, man, I ain't got nothing to say, man. I'm excited, excited to see how how it plays out. Hundred percent. So, if you made it through the this special emergency bot edition of the Off the Glass podcast, we appreciate you. Um, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and follow those socials you see there at the bottom at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Um, YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. If you are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, go ahead, drop a five star rating and uh, pre download the show. Helps us out a ton, helps us out with the algorithms. So we can start moving on to the sports podcast charts. We appreciate all the support as always. I'm Billy, that's Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.